Three sources discuss the goal of the survey. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle tells why it was ordered. After this had the king a large meeting. And very deep consultation with his council. About this land. How it was occupied. And by what sort of men. Then sent he his men over all England into each shire. Commissioning them to find out how many hundreds of hides were in the shire. What land the king himself had. And what stock upon the land or, what dues he ought to have by the year from the shire. Also he commissioned them to record in writing, how much land his archbishops had, and his diocesan bishops, and his abbots, and his earls, and though I may be prolix and tedious, what, or how much, each man had, who was an occupier of land in England, either in land or in stock and how much money it was worth. So very narrowly, indeed, did he commission them to trace it out, that there was not one single hide, nor a yard of land. Nay, moreover, it is shameful to tell, though he thought it no shame to do it. Not even an ox, nor a cow, nor a swine was there left, that was not set down in his writ and all the recorded particulars were afterwards brought to him. Quote, the list of questions asked of the jurors was recorded in the Inquisitio Eliensis. The contents of Doomsday Book and the Allied records mentioned above. The primary purpose of the survey was to ascertain and record the fiscal rights of the king. These were mainly the national land tax, Geldum, paid on a fixed assessment certain miscellaneous dues, and the proceeds of the crown lands. After a great political convulsion such as the Norman conquest, and the following wholesale confiscation of landed estates, William needed to reassert that the rights of the crown, which he claimed to have inherited, had not suffered in the process. His Norman followers tended to evade the liabilities of their English predecessors. Historians believe the survey was to aid William in establishing certainty in a definitive reference point as to property holdings across the nation. In case such evidence was needed in disputes over crown ownership, the Doomsday Survey, therefore, recorded the names of the new holders of lands and the assessments on which their tax was to be paid. But it did more than this. By the king's instructions, it endeavoured to make a national valuation list, estimating the annual value of all the land in the country. 1. At the time of Edward the Confessor's death. 2. When the new owners received it. 3. At the time of the survey. And further, it reckoned, by command, the potential value as well. It is evident that William desired to know the financial resources of his kingdom and it is probable that he wished to compare them with the existing assessment, which was one of considerable antiquity, though there are traces that it had been occasionally modified. The great bulk of Doomsday Book is devoted to the somewhat arid details of the assessment and valuation of rural estates, which were as yet the only important source of national wealth. After stating the assessment of the manor, the record sets forth the amount of arable land, and the number of plough teams, each reckoned at eight oxen, available for working it, with the additional number, if any, that might be employed. Then the river meadows, woodland, pasture, fisheries, i.e., fishing weirs, water mills, salt pans, if by the sea and other subsidiary sources of revenue. The peasants are enumerated in their several classes. And finally the annual value of the whole, past and present, is roughly estimated. Quote, the organization of the returns on a feudal basis enabled the conqueror and his officers to see the extent of a baron's possessions. And it also showed to what extent he had under tenants and the identities of the under tenants. This was of great importance to William. 
not only for military reasons but also because of his resolve to command the personal loyalty of the under-tenants, though the men of their lords, by making them swear allegiance to him. As Doomsday Book normally records only the Christian name of an under-tenant, it is not possible to search for the surnames of families claiming a Norman origin. Scholars, however, have worked to identify the under-tenants, most of whom have foreign Christian names. The survey provided the king with information on potential sources of funds when he needed to raise money. It includes sources of income but not expenses, such as castles, unless they needed to be included to explain discrepancies between pre- and post-conquest holdings of individuals. Typically, this happened in a town where separately recorded properties had been demolished to make way for a castle. Early British authors thought that the motivation behind the survey was to put into William's power the lands, so that all private property and land came only from the grant of King William. By lawful forfeiture, the use of the word antecessor in the Doomsday Book is used for the former holders of the lands. Under Edward and who had been dispossessed by their new owners.